about you, I need a lot more. A little, little dab won't do me. I need a lot more, Jesus, to help me along the way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know Jesus said if you had the faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and it shall be done. I, I agree with that. But I, I'm kind of greedy when it comes to Jesus. I ain't saying it takes a lot of Jesus for me. I'm just greedy when it comes to it. More Jesus. Can you say amen? I'm kind of hoarse when it comes to more Jesus. I want all the Jesus that I can get. Can you say amen? I want all the Jesus that I can get. I need a lot more Jesus to help me along my way. Because sometimes the road gets rough. Sometimes the going gets mighty tough. So I need all the Jesus that I can get to help me along the way. But sometimes I admit I, I get in the way of Jesus. Some of you might be better at it than me, but sometimes I get in his way. So I need a lot of Jesus to move me out of his way. Ooh, glory to God. Amen. Sometimes we get the big head and think we have arrived and think we are somebody and we won't let. I know some of y'all don't have that problem, but I have a problem. Sometimes I get beside myself. Sometimes I think what I'm doing, I'm doing it on my own. But I need it.
Jesus yelled no more life before I got saved. I womanized or a gambler. But he reached down. Put me out of muck and the
waters run together. What God said it moved. That you and I might have a right to the eternal life. He did it for me. He did it for you. Nobody. Now can I prove it? The Bible said that was a search. Give, and it will be given to you. 
good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your laps. For the measure which you shall use will be measured back to you again. I'd like to change passage of scripture here. You'll probably like to say what I like best. Shaking together, running over, will men give unto your bosom. Whatever you give men, this passage here is telling you that he'll give it back. God will cause them to give it back to you. Press down. Shake it together. You may be seated. I'd like to use just for text. You are well off. You as a child of God purchased by blood are well off. Hey man, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I got it, man. You can't look at your bills not being paid and the amount of money coming in and tell yourself, you ain't got it, man. As a child of God, you cannot equate that as your riches. You can't allow that to tell you you're broke or you have plenty. Because your wealth is, has nothing to do with earthly possession. Can I say that again? Our wealth has nothing to do with earthly possession. Tom, I looked like I had money when I didn't know God. I always said, if you ain't got it, you look like you got it. Dress like you got it. Act like you got it to begin. If that's what you're focusing on. Things of the world. Fake it. Till you make it. But a believer. We are not rich as the world sees riches. Our riches is spiritual. Now that you're in Christ. A lot of our lives has nothing to do with the man's system. Even though we chase it all. Our life has nothing to do with the worldly system. We are heirs to the kingdom. And our treasures are not earthly but heavenly. We are adopted by God. And what we see belong to us. Y'all believe that? What you can physically see that belongs to God belongs to His children. The Bible says the wealth of the world is laid up for who? So what the world sees as riches, God just loaning it to them. So don't you get depressed because you don't have a Bentley? Don't get depressed because you don't have a, a, a mansion, a million dollar mansion somewhere. Don't get depressed because you don't have all of this and all of that in the banks. Because guess what? All of that's going to pass away. None of that is everlasting. And years ago, you used to say this. They used to say this. You'll never see a Brinks truck following a hearse. <laughs> so why chase what doesn't last? I'm one of these people. I don't. I don't like nothing that don't last. I won't purchase nothing that ain't gonna last. I won't try to save myself a nickel or a dime and buy something cheap because it ain't going to last. I'm going to spend a good penny for it so it will last. Amen. You get what? The wealth of the wicked is laid up for 
the church. We are heirs. The Bible says that their riches belong, actually, belong to us. As children of God, we must learn God's system. Amen. You can't look at folk that you think got it made and be envious because you don't have what they have. Yeah, it'd be nice to have some of that, but I can't let that consume my thinking. I can't be, I can't allow that to eat at me because I don't possess it. I got to focus on heavenly things. Because after all, my, my, my strive is to live forever. I'm working toward eternity. What I got in the bank, when they take me to Evans or wherever, I can't take it with me. But what I invest in while I'm alive. What I'm investing in right now, my bank account is not in the earth, it's in the heaven. Bible says, lay not your treasures upon the earth where moth and rock doth corrupt, and thieves break in and steal up where your heart is. So will your treasures be also. God's system, and get this fact, God's system is based on generosity. You won't tell me what you see others with become generous. Not envious, but become generous. And so into the lives of others. Do you hear me now? I, I promise you. I guarantee you. If you invest in others, you will have more than what. Now you flip that over. That same passage of scripture said, "Give, and it shall be given." Let's flip it over. Don't give. And it won't be given unto you. Good. We, I, most of us ain't college graduates, but we got common sense. If I don't give, it won't be given back to me. And the scripture says, if I do give, I'll get good measures. That, that, that is a marketplace Phenomenal. In other words, when they went to the market to, to purchase grain, the Bible says when, when they went to purchase grain, the seller of the grain will begin to fill their bag or their, their barrel or whatever with grain. And then after so much put in it, he began to press it down. To what? Make room for more grain. And then once he pressed it down, he said to himself, there's still more room. <laughs> so he begins to... <laughs> Somebody ought to have a pressed down spirit about our giving. Somebody ought to have a shaking together spirit about... They shake it together, Brother Greg, so it'll make more room. In other words, every grain in the barrel takes up the extra space. And when that happens, there's room for more. And then they said, run it over. In other words, top, when they top it off, it's spilling out. So they get more or get everything they preserve. Or they purchase. They get every bit of what they purchase because the seller of the grain was fat. Gave them what they deserve. So guess what? When you give, yes. God's going to give you
And after we got done, I decided I'm going because nobody has that part but Lowe's and Oak Ridge. So I'm going to go to Lowe's and get me a new chain. Sister, I've got money to buy a new chain. I ain't got to ask nobody to give me no money to buy no new chain. I was on my way getting ready to go to Oak Ridge in my truck. An individual walks up. I'm like, I'm thinking, we'll see. It might, and it might not get you one, but that'll help me.
But you can crunch the numbers without it with Jesus. Million dollars for ceiling. Yeah. This place is worth a few million, am I right? So, both the property and all, everything set up. We didn't have that kind of money. Dollar for dollar, am I right? Yes. 
And, and, and Sister Spring would say this back when we was over in the little church. Boy, he made me mad. So, so every time he'd get in a little saving, right, he'd end up just about giving it all away. <laughs> and guess what? I, I didn't have much knowledge about this principle, giving. I, I was just liberal. I was a liberal person. And because I was liberal, it obligated God. Even though I was babe in the law growing, it obligated God to give back to the sower. Why? Because his word says he gives seed to who? I can have seed, sister, and never put it in the ground. It has the ability to produce, but if I never take it out of my jar or whatever I got it and place it in the ground, it can never create cause increase. It remains, the Bible says, all by itself. My dollar in my pocket, it stays in my pocket, can never produce an increase. I must first sow it. And the believer's soil is other believers or other people. That's the soil that we sow into. And it don't always, saints, have to be money. Amen? Take a little time out for somebody else. Don't let your life be so important to you and so busy that you can't cancel what it is that you love to do or want to do to go and make life a little bit better. Hmm. Can I say this again? Don't chase everything to accumulate what you want and at the same time neglect Somebody else. <laughs> Quit praying, telling God go somewhere you go. <laughs> Quit praying and say, God, you know, that's what it called you to do. It called you to consider others, and I'm about done. More so. Then you'll see. We can't keep looking at it like it's minister's responsibility. I'm wondering if sister's bringing the fire check down. Did you? Amen. So what? There we go. But if you if you don't spend time, your life is so busy, you don't spend time making things easy and comparable for others. Things will never be easy and comparable for you. Amen. So we have to give. Give over our time. Give over our abundance. Give over ourselves. So that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Amen. And then when it's time for you to be blessed, it'll happen because of your soul. Yes. Mr. Ellison, and I'll sit down. There used to be an old gentleman lived in the house next door to what used to be our old fellowship or church. He was 90-something years old. I shared his story. And uh, he was like 93, 94 year old sister Springs at the time. He had moved in there, hadn't been there long. And I was out here mowing the grass. I'd see him sitting over under that little car for me. And a mower broke down. We as a church, we had to put it in the shop. We hired an individual to mow our grass. Well, he mowed the grass, but he didn't get close enough to the house. That carport is really on our property. By our, by our uh, what you call it? Our what? Our survey. 
that carport sits on right on top of our property line. And she got to fussing. She said he didn't mow close enough to the house. I think he stayed about four or five foot from it. She called me. She asked me, are you associated with the church next door? I said, yes, ma'am, I'm the pastor. And she was fussing. She says, well, my husband, he gets out there and he tries to mow it. But he's too old. And this whoever's mowing it ain't coming over close enough to the house. So he's having to mow what's left. I said, well, ma'am, our, our, our moor's in the shop. And uh, as soon as it get out, we'll take care of it. And she just went off in the left field. She said, well, he don't like lights. <laughs> really? So he, he got a black great-grandson, had, you know, mixed great-grandson. He don't have nothing to do with it. I said, well, ma'am, as soon as we get our moor, we'll take care of it. I'm trying to get off the phone with she went on and on. And finally, we got her moored, and I was out there mowing. It was middle of all the top. Now he sits in that carpet in a straight chair just watching. <laughs> and finally, he did like he. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> First thing hit my mind, he don't like rock. <laughs> So I pull over. He said, Hardy! I said, Yes, sir, sure is. Shut her off. Come over here and have a cold glass of ice water. <laughs> I'm still thinking. You know what? I don't know if I'm that thirsty. <laughs> but I went on, shut her off, sat down, make a long story short. Got that glass hot boy, it's cold, um, good boy, and we befriended each other, and I found out he was not what she said he was, but I would, from time to time on the way home, I'd stop her checking on the church before I'd go to Robin, coming from Oak Ridge, and I'd see about him, and I was taking him to the store, getting his groceries, getting his medicine, stuff like that, and everything. And every now and then he couldn't hear all that good. He'd sneak over on the sun and sit back on one of those back feet. But he told me, he said, you know what? He said, you're a good man. All right, He said, you're a good man. He said, you didn't know me from Alan. He said, you start doing for me, helping me, and yes, and He said, if the Lord blesses you to reach my age, by a good time, He'll have somebody for you just like He got for me. If somebody will be there for you, what sort of a man saw? They tell it all so.
do it for you. Come on, let's go. Oh, glory be to God. Come on, get, put your hands together and give God some praise. For what he has done here for us today.